Good morning, everyone. Just want to informally welcome you first, but we'll wait um, a few more minutes for the, the other participants to come in. If you're wondering if you're in the right place, this is the regional launch event of the Gender Equality Monitoring Tool. Okay, I think it's time to, to start. So let me formally welcome everyone to the regional launch event of the Gender Monitoring and uh, Gender Equality Monitoring Tool or the GEM2 tool, GEM tool in short. So just wanna quickly say good morning to everyone in Asia. Good evening uh, and good very early morning for those who are in Europe and good evening for those who are in the US. So I will start by just simply saying that um, gender inequality does exist, but would it be good for us to be able to tell where it exists and be able to tell how intense it is and how we can use that information to address the issue. This is where we started thinking about this gem tool and today you will hear more about it and we will together launch the tool. So without further ado, um, my name is Piranan Towashira Pon. I'm the director of Geospatial Information Department of ADBC and I'm also the chief of party of Sylvia Macon project um, as a joint uh, project by uh, between NASA and USAID. So I have here with me um, uh, three distinguished speakers who will um, set the scene for us and give an opening remarks. The first person that I would like to invite to the panel, uh, to the to the podium here is Mr. Todd Johnson, who is the Senior National uh, Resource Officer from USAID Asia Bureau, Washington, D.C. Todd, the floor is yours. Thank you, Fernand, and good morning, everyone. Distinguished guests, Mr. Hans Gutmann, Executive Director of the Asian Disaster Preparedness Center, and Mr. Dan Irwin, NASA's Global Program Manager for SEVERE. Uh, it's great to be here with you all today. My name is Todd Johnson. I'm a Senior Natural Resources Officer in the Environmental Security and Resilience Division of the Asia Bureau of USAID, uh, based in Washington, DC, although today I'm joining this event from um, here in Bangkok. The first thing I wanna to do today is to congratulate the SEVERE Mekong on the launch of this Global Equality Monitoring <laughs> Platform. I also want to acknowledge our longstanding and successful partnership with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the partnership with the Asian Disaster Preparedness Center under the Severe Mekong program. We all know that we must work across technical sectors and beyond national borders to address the climate crisis. There probably is no better example of this than using NASA's satellite expertise to mitigate problems here on Earth. Over the last eight years, Severe Mekong has developed demand-driven tools and services to ensure that the 250 million people who call the Lower Mekong region home are better prepared to understand and respond to the impacts of climate change. In every technical area where we work, USAID promotes the rights and inclusion of underrepresented people in the development process. In March, 2021, President Biden signed an executive order to establish the White House Gender Policy Council. In USAID's Regional Environment Office, we support the Biden-Harris administration agenda by promoting women's economic empowerment and enhancing gender equity in climate change mitigation. Your participation here today helps USAID advance these efforts. Currently, the Gender Inequality Index is an indicator of gender disparity in the Lower Mekong region and lacks dis disaggregated data, making it difficult to examine aspects of gender inequality and track the performance of initiatives designed to reduce that inequality. But today with the support of NASA and USAID, Severe Mekong is launching the Gender Equality Monitoring or GEM platform to offer published gender related data. The GEM platform can be used by policymakers, researchers, and development practitioners across the Lower Mekong region to identify gender gaps in employment sectors, establish baseline data for tracking gender inequality, understand subnational dynamics, and increase transnational cooperation on data collection, sharing, and analysis. Your participation in today's launch event aligns with regional initiatives such as the ASEAN Gender Mainstreaming Strategic Framework and ASEAN's Women, Peace, and Security Agenda. 
but initiatives only lead to impact when committed individuals and organizations use lessons learned to develop local solutions. I encourage you to use the GEM platform as part of your gender equality work, and please, please let us know how the platform could be improved. Thank you all again for taking the time to be here today, and now let me pass the floor back to Kun Karanam. Thank you. Thank you so much, Todd, for the kind words and also for the support from USAID all along. Next up, I would like to invite um, Dan Irvin from NASA. He's the program director of the Global Severe uh, Program. Dan has been supporting us for, for many, many years. So let's hear from Dan. Dan, take it away, please. Thank you so much, Piernan. And it's such an honor to be here at the launch of the Severe Mekong uh, Gender Equality Monitoring Platform. It's an exciting week of launches uh, for NASA uh, with this today and our Artemis One mission around the moon on Monday. And I want to give a really big thanks to USAID, in particular, its Women's Economic Empowerment Initiative for making this success possible, and to our colleagues and friends at the Asian Disaster Preparedness Center and the Stockholm Environmental Institute for all of their hard work in this process. Simply put, applied sciences doesn't work if it doesn't work for everyone, and that's especially true of Severe's mission. If our efforts to foster sustainable development don't improve the lives of women, we're not upholding USAID's mission. And if our efforts to build resilient communities don't address climate change's disparate impacts on women, we're not upholding NASA's Earth mission. The scientific community can't build a bright future for everyone if it doesn't listen to everyone, plain and simple. And to ensure that we're truly representing those we help, hope to support, Severe Mekong is helping scientists and communities better understand gender inequality across time and geography with the GEM platform. This includes gender disaggregated data on education, media access, and public health to help us recognize and act on the nuances of inequality in the region. And this is just one of the many steps that Severe and NASA and USAID are taking to make geospatial technologies and professions more accessible and inclusive. For example, we're now prioritizing gender disaggregated data in our tools and services. We're, we're creating new opportunities to include social science and environmental justice in the design of our services. And we're creating programs to make careers in STEM more welcoming and gender inclusive. On behalf of NASA and the Severe Science Coordination Office, I want to commend the entire Severe Mekong Consortium, and in particular, ADPC and SEI on their tremendous leadership in this effort. This is a community that's worked long and hard to champion a future where Earth and climate science is accessible to everyone. While the GEM platform focuses on the Lower Mekong region, the spirit behind it sets an example for the rest of the Severe Global Network and the rest of the scientific community as a whole. Congratulations again, and thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Dan. We'll look forward to for continuing the work with, with you and USA to scale up this work. Now, uh, let me turn the floor to Hans Goodman, who's our executive director from ADPC. Hans, please. Well, thank you, Miranan, and uh, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. A very, very early good morning from Stockholm in Sweden. And it's uh, also a pleasure to see uh, Todd again from USAID and Dan Irwin just spoke from NASA, as well as other colleagues and friends. And thank you for joining us here uh, this morning, uh, uh, evening in some cases, um, for the launch of the Severe Mekong Gender Equality uh, Monitoring, or GEM, has been said before platform. Recognizing that although great progress in reducing gender inequality has been made, uh, it is important to be able to measure the current status as a basis for further efforts, as pointed out by Piranan in the beginning. And uh, reiterating and perhaps emphasizing what's been said before, if half of the world faces gender-based constraints, in addition to all other issues, we can never reach our full potential nor reap the benefits of an equal and fair society. Um, the Asian Disaster Preparedness Center, or ADPC, for those who do not know us, uh, is an autonomous international organization that works for safer communities and sustainable development uh, through disaster risk reduction in Asia and the Pacific. And as mentioned before, the Severe Mekong is a joint development initiative between USAID and um, NASA. It's implemented by ADPC and its partners, uh, Deltaris, um, 
SIG and of course SEI, which is contributing a lot in, in this particular context. And I would also like to thank again the USAID and NASA for this incredible partnership. And ADBC has been hosting the Severe Hub for the Lower Mekong since 2014. And during this time, ADBC has made uh, considerable progress in mainstreaming gender and diversity for a fairer and more equal society. And with the continued support of our partners, we look forward to building achievements, uh, building on these uh, achievements. But as the head of the organization, perhaps I'd like to just recap uh, some of these achievements and see how that brings us forwards. And uh, in addition to the efforts uh, under SEVERE to mainstream gender equal approaches and with the support from the Swedish International Development Corporation, or SIDA, ADBC together with its partners uh, were implement, is implementing building resilience through inclusive and climate adaptive disaster risk reduction in Asia Pacific, a very a long name, which we often abbreviate as BRDI. Um, for short, um, which aims at protecting development gains and enhancing regional cooperation uh, on inclusive and gender equal disaster risk reduction approaches and generating practical tools to achieve this. And in 2018, ADPC established a gender and diversity working committee to ensure gender equality across ADPC's ongoing work and operational structures. And this GDWC, along with ADBC's um, departments, are currently engaged in defining the vision and establishing the systems needed for institutional transformation in this area. ADBC's gender and diversity framework was launched in 2019 and has been um, operation is operationalizing now, uh, which includes five overarching gender equality principles and approaches that guide the gender mainstreaming activities of ADPC. And through a two-tiered approach, ADPC aims to mainstream gender equality principles across the organization by introducing gender transformative programmatic goals and promoting outcomes that reflect and ensure equality for all of society across the thematic and operational departments of ADPC. And affirming a strong commitment to building gender competence at all staffing levels through supportive organizational policy and a capacity building program. Quantifying and visualizing gender inequality is critical to examining gender disparity and for prioritizing intervention measures to improve it. And in the Lower Mekong region, the Gender Inequality Index, or GII, a proxy for the severity of gender disparity, uh, unfortunately lacks disaggregated data currently, to make it, which makes it difficult to examine multiple aspects of gender inequality and track the performance of gender promotion initiatives. But building on and informed by these initiatives and others, SEV Mekong has developed the GEM platform, um, which, as mentioned, offered published gender data, gender-related data, and periodically updated gender inequality indices calculated subnationally for the lower Mekong countries. And as you will witness today, the GEM platform can be used by gender equality advocates, policymakers, researchers, and development practitioners to address two key issues, gender data gap at the subnational level and accessibility to gender statistics, which is critical to examine and track changes in gender inequality. I hope you will um, be involved and use the GEM platform as part of your gender mainstreaming efforts. And please, as mentioned earlier, also let us know how the platform can be improved further, modified to meet your current and future requirements. With that, I'll thank you all um, for taking time to be here and look forward to today's discussions and of course, implementation and use in the future. Thank you very much. Back to you, Pirana. Thank you so much, Hans, for the kind words. Now the time is right for us to, to launch the two together. So let me invite everyone to join the countdown. And once the, the clock hits zero, I will invite the three um, distinguished speakers, uh, Todd, Dan, and Hans to virtually press the activation button, and then we will launch the two. So now join me with the countdown. Yes. Now it's launch. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so much, um, 
Todd and Dan and and Hans, uh, you you join us to really launch it. Now it's public, so anyone can access to to this tool now. And we will hear a bit more about the tool and learn even more on how we can work together to utilize um, this tool. So with that, um, this is the end of the opening session. Now we are getting into the technical session of the um, of of the event today. So it's my pleasure to invite um, Dr. Han Nguyen, um, the gender specialist from SEI, who will uh, walk us through the gender equality uh, monitoring platform. So the floor is yours, Ha. Huh? Uh, sorry, before you, you take over, huh, I just want to tell all the participants that the chat function at the bottom of the screen is where you can uh, provide us feedback, answer questions, and play games. I will not spill any more beans, but there will be games. Ha, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Piranan. I'm still too excited to watch the launch. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening um, uh, to the other side of the globe. So, um, my name is Hang Nguyen from Stockholm Environment Institute. I have had a wonderful time working with amazing, hardworking colleagues from um, ADPC, uh, University of San Francisco, uh, AIT, to develop the GEM platform. So today, on behalf of the team, I have great pleasure to introduce you to the GEM platform. So in the next 40 minutes, uh, I'll walk you through the platform, uh, introduce you to what you can expect from the platform and how to use the platform. But this will not be a one-way monologue. After introducing you to the GEM platform, I will invite you to take part in a game. So in which you will be asked to search for some data using the GEM platform. So since it is a game, there will be winner and reward. So the winner of the game, uh, those who give the first correct answer will receive real gift deliver to your post address. So yeah, get excited about that. So hopefully by the end of the section, you will be familiar with the GEM platform and be able to make use of it whenever you need. So let's start with a small exercise to get to know each other, uh, to get to know about our commonality or differences in terms of using or experiencing the, uh, the gen, uh, with gender data. So uh, please uh, go to the chat box. So we will use Mentimeter uh, poll now. So you can see the code. Uh, if you are using the phone, uh, you can go to mentimeter.com and the code is on the screen or you go to the chat box. Now you see the importance of the chat box and click in the link. So I uh, give you uh, a few seconds to try to get to the Mentimeter. Okay, so when you get into the Mentimeter, you see what you will see, uh, the, the sesame tweet. Uh, and under that uh, uh, graphic, you will see five icons. The heart, the question mark, um, come up and down, and the cat or evil, whatever you call it. So this is, let's say it's a uh, mood checking. You click at whatever icon that you feel resonate to your mood. Please do it now. It also helps us to see whether you are ready or not. Yeah. Almost ready. Okay, so let's go to the first question
So this question about whether you have used gender data in your work, which is yes or no. And you will see the result on the screen. Yay! So everyone have used gender data in your work. So we are all bind by the commonality of using or see, seeing the necessity of gender data in our work. Let's move to the next question. This asks you to read the challenges, the level of challenges in searching and assessing gender data at subnational level, at subnational level. Okay, we have nine second left, seven, six, five. Please click to the answer. Yay. Yeah, I think two thirds of us find difficulty in, in, in searching for gender data. And basically the majority, most of us find certain level of difficulty or challenge in searching for gender data. And um, yeah, we hope that the, the GEM platform will somehow uh, help you to, to, to mitigate that problem. Uh, shall we move to the next, the next one? This is just... Um, Something for fun. Uh, okay. So the magic, magical rhino is the one who gives the fastest response, but we don't know who that person is. So let's move on to the next one. That's last question. So you can, but uh, you can write as much as uh, you like, and please write keywords. Wonderful. It's amazing to see how many type of data that we are looking for. And um, yeah, so. Ooh. So. 
some of the data that you are looking for, for example, uh, the income gap, the income, education, employment, um, health, gender-based violence, and so on and so forth, access to health, uh, health services. Uh, many of the information or the data that you are looking for are available in the platform. So, um, yeah, great. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking part in this uh, uh, Mentimeter poll. And uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful to get to know what, what, what are your needs and what you're looking for uh, in terms of uh, data. And this is something that drives us to keep going. Uh, and uh, to keep improving the platform. Thank you so much. Now we uh, we actually move on to the main part, which uh, I'd like to introduce you to the Gem platform. So we are going to play a pre-recording video that I walk you through through the platform. And what I'd like uh, to ask you to do now is to browse to the platform and you can see uh Joe, could I ask you to to post the link of the jam platform uh to the chat box and I'd like you to if possible um browse through the platform uh while watching or listening to the in introduction video uh, with me yes so you can go to the chat box and click to the, the link that Kunzua just posted. Yeah. And Kunzua, may I ask you to, uh, to put on the video, please? Hello. Now I'd like to introduce the main feature of the GEM platform and how to explore data on the platform. You are looking at the home page of the gem. Let's start from the top of the page. On the top right of the screen, you can see the flag of the Mekong country. You can select language by clicking on the flag. If you, we don't have the flag of Myanmar for now due to its political situation, but the platform still offers data from Myanmar. This top bar shows the main feature of the platform you can search for gender inequality index and gender data by sector. You can download data. You can learn more about how GIR is calculated and where the data come from in the resource bar. Here's a brief introduction of the GEM platform, the available data set, and how you can use the GEM. This platform offers two types of data gender inequality index developed by UNDP. Uh, the index is designed to measure three aspects of human development, reproductive health, labor, and empowerment. The index range from zero to one with the, the lower index value, the better gender equality. UNDP's GII aims to monitor gender inequality between countries across the globe. This platform offers a unique feature, GII for measuring inequality at subnational level. It shows gender inequality between regions and provinces within a country. Therefore, it can be used by national actors to develop gender responsive policy and plan. While GII presents gender disparity as a fixed number, sectoral gender data shows disparity between women and men in various aspects of human well-being, for example, education, access to health services, participation in labor market, gender-based violence, political participation, and so on, through six disaggregated data. This platform allows to identify gender gaps by sector and by region or provinces, which are crucial for examining and designing interventions. We can go to data set from here or from the top bar. 
Now let's check out the GII. You can view GII by region or by country. For regional view, you can select view by country and the countries that you'd like to look at or compare. We are selecting five, all five countries for now. You can use this glide bar to select the year. Let's leave it at 2019. You can view GII and four dimensions that construct GII. We add one more dimension, which is gender-based violence to the GII at subnational level because gender-based violence is an important aspect or reflection of gender inequality. This graph compare GII across the country using UNDP's calculation. This graph show changes over the past 10 years. You can change or select the year in these boxes. You can also print the graph or download the data from here. If you want to view any particular country, you can select that country in the drop down list, then select view by province. I am selecting Cambodia and some provinces. This graph compare GII between the selected provinces. This graph shows the changes and also reveals some data gaps. This spider web chart shows four dimensions that construct GII at subnational level. They have identified which aspect of gender inequality which is more critical. Please note that you can only view GII dimension in spider web chart when you choose viewing by province. This shows GII dimension in bar chart. We'd like to give user more visual options. For a new search, you can reset the map. Let's move to sectoral gender data. There's no option for cross-country comparison here. Each country has different definition for the data set. I'm selecting Laos, for example. This drop-down list shows available data categorized by sector and the data set under that sector. You can select all provinces or a specific one. You can choose data by male or female and see the gender gap. You can select year by using the glide bar. Gray color means no data available. There are two types of data visualization, map and graph in this uh, interface. You can print and download the data by clicking here or go to the download tab. From the download tab, you can select data set, filter by country or by province, sector and year. In the resource tab, you can download technical notes that explain how GII R is calculated. If you want to check where the data come from, you can find it here. It's important to know some limitation of this platform. For example, data in this platform is mostly disaggregated by six. Therefore, it's done not, it, it does not allow for intersectional analysis, for example, with age and ethnicity. Comparing gender gap between country at subnational level is challenging due to the lack of common data set across the country. Sometimes, Checking change within the country is also difficult, particularly when the country has adjusted definition of a data set. Nevertheless, this limitation would hopefully call for better collaboration on data collection and data sharing among state agencies. We treat the GEM platform as a learning baby that is eager to take in ideas and adapt to user needs. So please go to about tech and send us your comment. 
you can suggest adding more data set that are available and should be uploaded to the platform. You could also share ideas for co-developing index or indicator for monitoring SDG. You could, you could comment on any technical glitch or suggest how to improve its function or visualization of data. Any idea is welcome. Lastly, I'd like to in introduce our team, composition of mixed expertise on gender, GIS, water, data processor, web designer, manager from Stockholm Environment Institute, ADPC, Asian Institute of Technology, and University of San Francisco. This platform would not be in this state without their hard work and commitment. On behalf of the team, I'd like to thank USAID and USAID's Women's Economic Empowerment Program for funding the development of this platform. Thank you for your attention and have a good day. Yeah, so I hope by now you uh, have some idea of how the platform works and how to search for data uh, in the platform. Uh, we're going to stop for a few minutes before moving to the next part of the session to collect some uh, immediate questions. Hada is one question for you already. The question is, how did you collect these data and how... how how, how much confidence are you on the do you have on the reliability of the data yes uh, so we use the uh, uh, national statistical data mostly come from national statistical office or in different countries that it has different name but mostly national statistical office or national survey so we we collect uh, data from all the surveys since uh, uh, 1990 something. Uh, so we are quite confident that this is official, officially uh, published data. Uh, do I address your question? Yeah, I think and I mean, you, you can explore the two and we have data sources listed um, on the tool itself. Another question that just came in, how did you analyze and interpret the data? Yeah, uh, this is a really good question. Uh, there are different ways of analyzing data. Sometimes we just need to see the gap. And uh, and I, I would say this tool, uh, since it's compare uh, gender sex disaggregated data, so if you mainly see the gap between women and men uh, to index or to uh, the value, the statistical value, the analysis we it shows the gap, but then to explore more on what happening behind, you need more research or more analysis, which this platform cannot do. It can only point you to the problem, but but as a user, you have to, you have to do further research. Um, Thank yeah. you, Ha. Huh? So I think we will close the question session for now, but please keep, uh, keep the questions coming. I will all just mo I will monitor them, but let's go on to the next fun part of your session, huh? <laughs> you're, you're muted. Yeah, cannot wait. Um, Kunjua, could you post the next part? The test again? Okay, now we are moving to the exciting part where you will ask you to try to use the gem and look for some data set. Yeah, so now I hope you have the, the gem platform ready on your screen. Uh, I give you some seconds to get ready. And, um, and we will show four questions. Uh, that ask you to look for for data set, and uh, you uh, uh, you need to go to the Gem platform, form find the answer, and send your answer directly to Jenny. So I hope you see Jenny in the chat. 
yeah, please send your direct or direct message to Jenny. If you accidentally send to everyone, it's fine, but everyone knows your answer. Um, okay, I hope you are ready by now. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. So Jenny have sent everyone a message, so please send your direct message to her after the question. Kunjua, could you show the first question? So this question uh, asks you about the highest gender equality in the G region in 2019 and the lowest one. So please find out two countries in the region which has the highest gender equality and the lowest gender equality. So the GII should uh, give you a value from zero to one, which the closer to zero, the higher gender uh, equality. Just give you a little bit of tip. Uh, Kunjua, could you show the answer? This is the correct answer. Vietnam has the highest gender equality, yeah. and Myanmar the lowest, the lowest gender equality. So what you uh, uh, should do is to go to the GII gender inequality index and select uh, all country and um, and GII in the uh, GII dimension, and you see the graph, and the graph show you the <laughs> excuse me the index. So this is simple exercise. Let's uh, move on to the next question. So which province in Cambodia has the highest reported case of physical violence? Please notice physical violence. There are many types of violence, physical, emotional, psychological, uh, but we are asking for physical violence in Cambodia in 2000. Please and identify the province which has the highest reported case, highest incident of physical violence. <laughs> so you have a uh, few more seconds, few more seconds. Okay. Um, can we show, uh, Kunju, can you show the response, the, the, the answer? Yeah, it's Kompom Chan for those who uh, who get this answer. It's Kompom Chan. So what you uh, should do is to go to uh, sectoral gender data. Go to select country, select Cambodia. And in the main sector, you go to gender-based violence. And in the data set, you will find a list of uh, uh, data set and you should go for uh, physical uh, violence. Yeah. Can you show the next question, please? Zoom now, you know how to find information by now. Um, Great. Um, let's show, uh, Jenny, have you received the re uh, response? Yes, I've been collecting the responses. Cool. Great. Um, let's show the answer. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. Here's a two way of finding uh, uh, information for this question. One is you generate the map, you go to uh, uh, Glaus and select uh, select media access and um, and access to um, um, to a phone. Hang on, sorry. It's too small that I cannot see. Um, yeah, so you 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 uh, you swipe access to mobile phone, the data set, and you compare in the uh, in, in the top bar, you see male and female data. So you can have a quick 
look and see uh, apparently male have more access to data uh, to uh, sorry to a uh, mobile phone compared to women. But then there's another way of finding data. If Kunjua, uh, could you move to the next slide? Uh, by looking at the gender gap tab next to male and female, where it shows the ratio be uh, 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 between female over male. So one mean equal, but above one mean positive to woman and below one mean positive to men. So if you look at the graph below the map, you see mostly the value is, most of the values um, are below one. So it shows a uh, woman get less access to mobile phone compared to men. Uh, yeah, uh, last question. Could you show the response, the answer? Yeah, it's Hazan with six women from ethnic minority uh, in the National Assembly, which is equal to uh, uh, parliament in other countries. So if you get this response right, even just the name of the province, that's fine. Uh, so so Jenny, um, um, Jenny have the record of who have sent her the first correct response. And um, will uh, Jenny, do we have the answer now or we can do it later announcing the winner? Uh, yes, can... I, I have the winners. So it was a showdown between Ankit and Kalani, basically. <laughs> it was very close um, and it's actually a draw. So Ankit responded the first two questions the first. And the third and fourth question, Kalani responded the first. Um, but Kalani also came very close to second, very, is a very close second in responding the second question. So congrats to both for being really good at uh, operating this platform. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I, I think we get to the end of the section. So I hope you uh, do have a better sense of what the gem can offer. And uh, yeah, I hope it in a way you can get back to it in the future and find information that you need. Uh, thank you very much. And I'd like to hand back to Peranan. Thank you so much, Ha. And I request um, all the participants to shift, your, to shift your attention back to the session. You can play with the gem platform later because the next session is a very interesting one. We are, we are going deeper into the platform itself, but we have experts who will guide us on how you can take data and, inf inf and information from the platform and use it for, you, for your own work. With that, I'm going to hand over the, the floor to... Um, Dr. Cynthia McDougall, who will facilitate the next session. Cynthia, take it, take it away. Thank you so much, Piranan. Um, and congratulations to everyone for jumping in and having a first go at finding data um, on the GEM platform. I hope that you found it very interesting and, uh, and, and fruitful. And I wanted to just introduce, um, before I jump into this session, I just wanted to say briefly who I am. I'm a senior research fellow at the Stockholm Environment Institute. In particular, I, it's my great privilege to lead the gender, environment and development team that's been a part of producing this. Uh, and on a personal note, I wanted to say I was, I was so excited to have a chance to connect with this project and to be part of this today. It was Dan Irwin at the beginning of the session who uh, he reflected that applied sciences don't work unless they work for everybody. And I think that it's a, it was a powerful statement and it applies to practice, it applies to policy. Uh, but to do this for, for practice policy sciences to work for everyone, there needs to be evidence. And that relies on data and it relies on data that's accessible to everyone equally. And so that's where I'm, I just think this is a fantastic initiative uh, and it's a real pleasure to, um, to be part of this launch today. That at a, personal level, I'm also writing a paper right now. And I thought, oh, if only I had some way to see, you know, some, some rankings around inequality in the region. And I, a colleague and I both went on GEM. And in about 10 seconds, I had a graph that I needed for my paper. So, so also highly practical and useful. 
Now to the session itself. What I wanted to do right now is um, invite our six wonderful panelists to turn on their cameras and join me here because this session is a chance for us to surface a little bit. So how can GEM be used in practice? Great that it's there, but how can people working in development in a whole range of areas on different aspects um, and different issues, how might they use it? And so what we've done is we've invited these six incredible professionals to take a moment before today's session uh, and to look at GEM through their work eyes and say, okay, so here's the platform. How would I use it? How would my organization use it? And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw some questions first to each of them, and then we'll have different panelists answer a couple of different questions that will surface in the real world. You know, when I sit down on my computer tomorrow and I, and I have my job hat on, how might I use this platform? So let me um, start by introducing and throwing a first question to each panelist in turn, same, same question. Um, so I'm going to ask, I'm going to introduce you and ask you to reflect uh, in your test of GEM. So what did you use it for? What, what purpose did you use it for? And we'll just keep it short and sweet there. We've got about 25 minutes for the whole panel. And I want to get into the juicier questions in just a second. So let me start with Kalani Sachs-Robertson, who is a disaster risk reduction analyst with UN Women Regional. Kalani, very much welcome to you. And can you please say, so in your test run, how did you use it? Thanks so much, Cynthia. And it's great to be on this panel today. Um, given that this was a test of the platform, I was mostly using it to understand the sort of um, subnational level dynamics that may contribute to gender inequality. And as I'm going through and exploring the data, I'm thinking to myself, which areas and communities within this country are, are particularly vulnerable to impacts of climate change and disasters. And I think we all know women disproportionately suffer these impacts and it's due to these persisting and pre-existing gender inequalities. So, you know, looking at mobile phone access, for example, in the test one was really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's something we often look at with our targeted programming. Um, and I think I, I also noted that Laos was maybe the only country where this data was available. So I'm very excited to, to see this tool because it can also be used to advocate for the wider collection of sex, age and disability disaggregated data and expanding platforms such as this. So thank you so much to this team and to all your work in developing this tool. Great, thank you, Kalani. Excellent insights also about that, that it, ex it, it exposes the, the data gaps themselves. That's really interesting. So looking forward to your next answer in a second. In the meantime, I'd like to move along the line in our virtual panel. Uh, over to Sarita Karki, who is the Gender and Development Specialist with ADPC's Building Resilience Through Inclusive and Climate Adaptiveness Project. Um, Sarita, very much welcome to you. Thank you for joining today. And just in brief, what in your test run, your piloting of the GEM, what purpose did you use it for? And I think you're muted at the moment. Sarita, can you kindly unmute? Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Cynthia and the organizer for this wonderful opportunity uh, in regards to GEM uh, tool uses. Uh, from our perspective, uh, we found uh, GEM is a very comprehensive tool that can be used by organization and projects with humanitarian development mandate, adapting with gender specific indicators set institutionally or project wise. Um, uh, to be picked up in the context specific, especially in our context is for the re risk analysis and other aspects mm -hmm. of response and recovery work, mm -hmm. especially since mm -hmm. gender is not static and some standardized in indicators can be set uh, responding to um, uh, the situation that we want to bring the inequality uh, fostered or towards gender equality. The GEM tool, what we found was we will be using it. The GEM tool we found supports the understanding of gender aspects and gender associated vulnerability in our work uh, in a more systematic manner backed up by data. It helps us indicate prevalent gender issues, different vulnerabilities of men and women in trend analysis in sectors that feed into gender and climate risk assessment, as well as formulating gender sensitive informed DRR intervention. And we found the use will create an opportunity for all us 
us to minimize gender gender inequality. Thank you. Wonderful, Sarita. Thank you so much, and welcome again to the panel. And I, I really appreciated you. You linked it to the, to the risk and vulnerability area, and and the words that um, caught my ear as you were describing this were also that it, it enables a systematic approach and the notion that you can see trends over time, which, as we know, is critical. So that's so interesting. Welcome. Uh, let's move over to introduce and ask the same first question: How did you use it? To our panelist, um, Patira or May uh, Chalad. Shalad Manakul, uh, May, welcome. And what do you feel? What was your what was your purpose in this first pilot? Um, thank you so much, Cynthia, and and, and um, greetings to everyone here in this meeting. Um, first of all, let me give a really brief. Um, um, context of the project um, enhancing equality for energy in Southeast Asia um, that, that, that I'm the male specialist on. So E4C works um, with the energy sector companies and to cherry educational institutions in Southeast Asia to advance gender equality in the energy sector in particular. So um, in our pilot test that I wanted to, I wanted to see how we can integrate the use of the GEM tool, particularly in our country assessment of gender equality profile and particularly on women's participation in the energy sector. So um, we can already see that both functions that Ha kindly walked us through earlier, both the GGI and the gender sectoral um, data gaps can be, I think, really helpful and useful for our work, particularly in the assessment research realm and uh, particular pertaining to education, for example, workforce participation, as well as women empowerment. And I think it's also really useful that we can um, download the data sets directly from the platform and get to visualize the gender gaps from, from them as well. So thank you so much. Brilliant, May, thank you. And I failed to introduce you originally. So thank you for doing that and, um, and bringing forward your, uh, that, that MEL hat, that monitoring evaluation and learning hat. And I love that you also mentioned the feature of being able to download the data because somebody had earlier said, but you know, how do you analyze, how do you interpret? interpret? And, and I think it's great that we can do some quick, ana quick analysis on the screen online, but then the fact that you can access data and continue to play with it. Yeah, I'm really glad you raised that. So thank you and welcome, May. We're looking forward to your next answers. Um, I'm going to turn now to our panelist, Lam Noy, uh, who is a training and international, uh, with the Training and International Cooperation Department of the Southern Institute of Water Resources Research. Lam, welcome very much. And from your perspective, how did you use the pilot? Um, uh, from my perspective, uh, the first it is very important that because I am I'm doing the, the project for the community, um, for water accessibility, especially we forgot on clean water accessibility for women uh, and um, disability, and also the old people in the community, especially in the vulnerable community. So then the uh, data is very important for us, especially we know clearly about the uh, uh, overview in the province and uh, our project focus on three countries in lower Mekong Beijing. We focus on Lao, Thailand and Vietnam. So we can easily to compare the, com the community characteristics and also the gender gap among three countries, especially among three provinces we focus on. Bến Tre in Vietnam and Savannah in Lao and Trường Rai in Thailand. So we have a, the quick overview about the gender gap or also the population. Uh, in terms of that, we also have uh, the physical, uh, physical violence on that. So we can easy to find out. It is a um, quick for a quick overview of our background about community or so for the interaction. It is quite helpful for my project uh, in uh, my institute. Wonderful, Lem, thank you so much. And I really loved how you brought us right to thinking about that very practical, very applied community level. And I, I know many people in this field need to get that overview, that background country level through the province so you can understand what's going on in the community on these big issues. That was, that was a, a beautiful snapshot of how this might be applied there. That's wonderful, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So um, let me turn now to Tri An and welcome you to um, the panel. Thank you so much for being here. Tri is a program analyst with UN Women in Vietnam. So Tri An, can you tell us a little bit, how did you approach this pilot? What did you use GEM for? Uh, thank you, Cynthia, and uh, uh, hello to everyone. 
So first of all, I would like to congratulations to uh, Sevier Mekong for this very good uh, gender mon monitoring tool. And um, I would like to share that as uh, like UN women in Vietnam, like we are kind of like working on gender equality in the countries. So, I mean, we also found that gender data, six and eight discrete data is very challenging, like even like for, for the country like Vietnam. And uh, as we are working on this area, very often we receive the call or request from like different partners and asking for data, like you know, sharing the, the information in the data about like, for example, the um, women representations in the parliamentary or in the national assembly. And like, so you can see that there's, the data is there, but it's, we don't have yet have this kind of like centralized and open and easy to access tools like where everyone can 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 come in and look for the data that they need. So I think that is a very great for everyone, especially for the like um, organization that working to promote gender equality in the countries. And um, uh, for for us, we also think that. Um, this tool we can help in monitoring the progress in terms of gender equality among the provinces in the countries, and uh, that will contribute a lot in terms of like promoting the the gender equality and see where the gap is, and focus on that. Thank you. Brilliant, Trian. Thank you so much. I really appreciated that you brought in both that we can use it to monitor and see change as a part of the doing but also that dimension of um, open access, the accessibility of data, and, and that it, it seems like it's gonna be helpful for a lot of people to know there's a one-stop shop, whether you're sitting in UN Women and people are asking you and you can help them find it, or whether it's just everybody knowing there's a good place to go that's likely to have this useful data. I, I'm really glad you raised that, thank you. So welcome to the panel, and last but very much not least, I'd like to welcome Elizabeth Eli Tipawang, who is a civil society specialist with the Mekong for the Future Project with WWF Greater Mekong. Eli, welcome to the panel so much. Um, we're delighted to have you here. And can you share from your perspective, what did you use your pilot of the GEM for? Yes, uh, thank you. And thank you so much to the team for having me on today's panel. Um, so I went super specific right away. I knew exactly <laughs> what I wanted to, to look for. Um, so I'm uh, so I'm based in Laos and I'm part of a team uh, that's um, developing a, a gender-based violence and climate change study and framework. And there's actually members of that team who are here today. Um, so right away, I'm looking at the subnational uh, gender-based violence questions and, and data sets. And uh, so for me to be able to do that in like a couple of clicks of a button, as opposed to um, begging my colleagues in the provincial <laughs> office to, to rifle through some, some actual like paper files and then having to um, question the, 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 how old some of this data is, because a lot of times we're looking at old academic papers and then we're having to, that maybe haven't been peer reviewed or um, looking at maybe really rough translations too, because I can't read Lao. So it's, um, you know, uh, just having, as Ha mentioned earlier, um, knowing that these are like the, the integrity of the data First of all, it's already gone through that that process. Um, not having to add further burden on like the national and certainly not the provincial level staff um, is really amazing. And then being able to kind of complement this and use this as like an extra level of verification for the existing baseline data that we're using, but at a very specific provincial level too. And then again, Ha mentioned that there's different ways of of defining and evaluating violence. There's not a one set uniform definition of violence. Um, so even being able to go through the different, I think there was five or six different subset questions about violence within the different provinces. And then just um, for my project, because it's a regional project, right now we're doing the, the Lao level, um, but then next year we're gonna be scaling this out to the region. So I'm just kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself and looking at how are we comparing this throughout the different countries in the region. Um, and I did all of this, in an hour, which what would normally have probably taken me months. Um, so that, you know, the time saving cannot be, um, cannot be illustrated enough. So that's, uh, this was pretty exciting stuff. That's wonderful. Eli, thank you so much. And I can imagine that everyone on the call is with you in that 
we cannot underscore enough how valuable it is to be able to do things in a way that doesn't take more time than we have. That I mean, one, it's going to help us with our work-life balance, but it also frees us up to do all the other parts of our job that are so critical. So I absolutely love that in your like zooming into something really specific, you were able to note it increased access, reduced burdens on your colleagues. It helped you know what the data was and how reliable it was. That's um, that's absolutely wonderful. So I feel like we are in absolutely fantastic hands here with this panel. We didn't premeditate to have this wonderful diversity of uses and the angles. It's it's just happened because we have this fantastic set of professionals that have used it in this different way. Um, I can imagine folks in the uh, who are in the session might be starting to brew on some questions already that they might have in mind for the panelists. So to participants, please go ahead and just park any questions you have for panelists in the chat. We'll come back to those in a minute. And what we'll do in the meantime is return to our panelists with a couple of questions from our side. I have one question that I wanted to throw out first to Kalani, Sarita, and May. Uh, and that is, uh, let's, let's start with you, Kalani. How did you, um, in more detail, can you talk about, so more specifically, what's the data and, and how did you analyze it? Somebody earlier was asking about that. Or a little more about, so how is that going to help you with your work quality or your outcomes or your goals? Over to you, Kalani. Thanks so much, Cynthia. So um, for me, sitting in the regional office, this is an extremely useful tool to have um, to visualize these gender gaps beyond just one national indicator, which is often what we end up having to use. Um, and with the team that I work with at UN Women, we have a few programs in the Mekong region, most notably our Empower program, um, which my colleague uh, Thuy An also works on um, in Vietnam, and that works towards women's resilience to climate change. We also have programs on COVID-19 recovery and disaster risk resilience. So the sectoral data indicators, and particularly regarding um, women's empowerment, access to education, gender-based violence, these are all really essential to our work and understanding the dynamics of the potential impacts of disasters and effects of climate change on women and communities. So this sort of tool allows us to really understand where to position and how to target our programming within a given country, um, where particularly vulnerable populations may be, but also where existing strengths could possibly be leveraged and reinforced and how our programs may be able to impact these areas. Um, again, it can also help to advocate with our partners, government and other stakeholders to act on data collection, data sharing and, and overall boost our ability for gender analyses and gender responsive planning uh, for disaster risk reduction and climate adaptation programming. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Kalani, that's a, that's a great insight into um, to that dimension of how you used it and, and the value it might bring. And I wanted to ask Sarita the same question and when, we'll turn to May as well. So can you, can you um, share on that from your perspective as well and bounce, feel free to bounce off what Kalani said. Over to you, uh, Sarita. Thank you, Cynthia. Yes, seconding what Kalani had just said, um, from Nepal's perspective, linking to our work in Nepal with our partner Youth Innovation Lab, we prepared a risk assessment framework to collect data. Uh, within that um, uh, assessment framework, we have prepared subsets uh, such as um, exposure, sensitivity, adaptive capacity. So we think, and then the process was a rigorous process to um, in one of the municipality uh, in province three of Nepal. Uh, and then uh, with that process, we collected the data and the data against the indicators that we had said within the framework gave us an ample amount of different avenues, which we had not did not think about. For example, uh, leadership, we did not have in the set, set, um, subset questions. So it just creates the data collection that we did within this framework has created an opportunity for us uh, to link our work at the national level. Because to be honest, uh, gender equality is yet to be prioritized. Of course, the goal remains the same for all of us, but due to the gender context specific aspects, uh, we have to 
adapt and standardize things. So this framework that we prepared uh, has been um, uh, in a consultative process with the National uh, Disaster Management Authority of Nepal and different um, consultative process are being undertaken with the analysis and the information that we have prepared in regards to addressing response and recovery within our work. So I think this GEM tool, if we are to use it, it gives us a different sectoral avenues where we can use it for the response and so forth. Uh, so uh, this country specific adaptation will be a rigorous process, but has to happen if we are to minimize gender gap and gender equality is what I think and what I'm sharing from our partner's perspective, Cynthia. Over to you. Wonderful. Thank you, um, Sarita, for sharing that. That um, I really like that you brought in also that the evidence and the linking up to national policy and the, the use of data in that and the framework, the systematic element of that. That's super valuable. This will really encourage uh, yeah. the use of data, I would say. That's excellent. That's very exciting to hear. May, what about you? Same question from your perspective. Um, sure, thanks, Cynthia. Um, so one of the our project work objectives is to basically identify core challenges to gender equality in the energy sector sector in Southeast Asia. So in addressing that, we have conducted both, for example, primary and secondary research to gain insight into these core challenges and barriers that prevent um, the uh, increased participation of women and girls that enter into not only the energy sector careers, but down um, the pipeline of talent into the STEM studies as well. So, so far we've completed our assessment in three countries, in Thailand, in Indonesia, in the Philippines, and we've started our data collection process in Vietnam. And um, in, in collecting primary data, we, we do that via focus group discussions. We do that via um, in-depth interviews with key stakeholders, as well as having um, conducted baseline citizen surveys to gather specific understanding of each country's baseline attitudes with regards to um, gender roles, education, and careers. So I, I can already see how disaggregated gender statistics in GEM can complement our understanding of baselines and help us track progress of these particular sectors of our interest over time. And as we move forward um, with our Vietnam um, assessment, um, I think we can definitely integrate both the GGI data and sectoral gender data sets from the GEM tool in our country assessment for sure. Um, and in answering your second question, I think um, how, how this contributes um, to our work goals and outcomes and quality. I think this assessment that, that we can definitely integrate GEM into the use will allow us to understand the gender equality climate of each of our focus countries. We work at the regional level, but I think it's really important that we also understand the specifics um, in terms of context and gender equality profiles of each country in order to better tailor our interventions to the context. And I really like what Ha said earlier that this platform helps to point us to the gap and problems. And E4C has extensive networks of, of partners, both on the energy sector um, company side and as well as leading tertiary educational institutions in the region. So we were looking to definitely share this tool with them because they're definitely starting to do a lot of gender equality related projects. And I think it will come in really useful in, in, in the face of that project design and, in, in, and identifying the gaps. So that, that, is it. that is it for me for now. And thank you so much, Cynthia. Over back to you. That's great. And it really sparks the imagination about using this for context specificity and identifying the gaps. And, and I'm starting to think about, so what else, you know, what other kind of data do we need that everybody could get access to? In just a second, I want to turn to Lam, Tree, and Eli to ask, to dig into that sort of what else to help us do this refining, this context specificity. But I just wanted to check any panelists want to respond or add to anything that's been said so far? whether you had a chance to, to speak to this particular question or not. Just wave your hand if you do, feel free to jump in. As imagine we're on a virtual couch somewhere, you know, with our microphone and our cups of coffee. Okay, so feel, so feel free to jump back in if you want to. Um, but in the meantime, I wanna bounce off uh, what we just heard from May and about uh, the different uses of this really start to spark the imagination about possibilities um, 
of how we use the data that's on here now, but also what are the data gaps? Uh, other panelists have already flagged that too. We can, by using this, we start to see, holy cow, there's only data up to this date or on these sections, what else is missing? So for Lam, Tree and Eli, I wanted to turn to that, what's next? Um, Gem is gonna continue to grow, to uh, curate other data sets, so, and to have other functions. So looking into the future, what do you think could and should be added to the platform to make it uh, even more useful and to, and to grow with us as the development sector um, and everyone who's working in, in these different fields? We're, um, we're becoming more aware of how much we need data and, and how much we need to get out of our data and how we need to share it even better and make it more accessible. So Lam, over to you. What do you think when you look into the future? What else or what different is needed? Uh, when I look at the future, uh, I hope that because I work in uh, on water sector, so I hope that um, uh, this uh, tool can update the first is uh, about the livelihood. The first I I would like to um, to to uh, to make clear about the income, especially the income of uh, women different between women and men uh, in rural area and also in urban, but, but I will focus on rural. The second, I would like to focus on the water accessibility, especially for the clean water accessibility compared with between women and men, because a woman with the body different, totally, mostly different with the men, and if a woman access less water, clean water when compared with men, the disease will come and uh, our health will impact directly to the our next generation. So the second is the water accessibility. And the third, I think, hope that we will have another data like the, like the um, uh, in, in, in specific sector, for example, the world, how women work in agricultural sector, how women work in the industrial sector, and also how can uh, women and um, uh, woman access um, um, get more income like the how 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 to be like the uh, more convenient for 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 women uh, in life in their livelihood more chance for for women in livelihood to income to increasing the the income the income to 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 uh, re repairing own thing in their life yeah this is my expectation. Excellent. That's fantastic. And you've got the right people listening to you on the call. So I, I hope that um, can, can be in the next wave. And as you spoke, I could hear some of those points. It, yes, in the water sector, but also some of those key words are issues that people identified in one of Ha's earlier Mentimeters as well, the income issues, the access issues and so forth. So yeah, I, I think there are a lot of folks who would be nodding virtually. Um, so Tri An, over to you. What do you think? What else is needed? Uh, yes, I think uh, people will have a lot of respect uh, for this platform. Um, I think uh, because I think currently now the, the data is there, but it's still quite like limited in some sectors. So I think people will expect that it will it can be expand to more sectors. Um, but I guess also is the questions of the available data. At the, at the country level, at the provincial level, because we also found that uh, maybe some data is, is available at the, at the country level, but, but when it goes down to the provincial level, it's not easy. So I also think that maybe we can, I mean, look at some national survey, which have like provincial data, such as like the labor force surveys, where we can look for the data for the women working in the informal sectors, uh, the woman, woman working in agriculture, I think uh, the other panelists already mentioned, and like the access to different resources uh, of women, because when, especially when, I mean, many of us here working on climate change and disaster, and we know that all this vulnerability of the woman and the limited access to resources are the, the factors that affecting the woman resilience so if we can have it at in so we will see that where the woman is more vulnerable where the gender gap are more to be focused on uh, so i think that is some of my suggestion also like how can we have more updated uh, data because currently now is the data is 2015 and 12 and um, so I think more updated data is, is really important. 
Thank you. Fantastic points. And I can hear that resonates a bit with what Lam spoke of and, and you're talking to other sectors, um, different dimensions of access and other issues. But I just wanted to flag a point you said in the middle, I think is really interesting about um, what is it? What is it drawing on? How available is the data that we need? Because I think it raises that bigger background picture for all of us and for folks who have the ability to influence what either national statistics or other reliable systematic sources of needed data. How, how can these folks mobilize to actually create the kind of data sources? I think this is interesting because we start to to ask questions and provoke in this area. We start to to back up to that issue of you know, what data can we trust and whose data and how is it being gathered? And yeah, I think that's fantastic. So thank you for that. And let's round this out. Um, Elizabeth, Eli, over to you. Um, what do you see as a need going forward? What else should there be in terms of the, the kind of data or the functions and the how to use that? Yeah, so I think um, in terms of the needs or where I would see this kind of progressing, as you mentioned, this is it's a living tool. So we're contributing to it and it's going to evolve based on that. And I think any of the needs that I saw were already underscored actually in the tool in the limitation section. Uh, so that would be taking more of like an intersectional lens and approach to how we're viewing the data right now. It's very much through this gender binary. It's men and women. Um, and again, this is because that's the data that's available and that's how we very much kind of reduce this concept of like gender equality or gender inequality is very much just men and women. It's very contextual between the countries as well. And this was brought up in the limitations. Um, so someone mentioned earlier about how we can be using this data to reinforce um, and fortify some of our advocacy as well in terms of language that we're um, asking for when we're looking at policy or when we're looking at some of the kind of proposals that we're developing. Um, but for me, like when I envision kind of like this, this perfect structure or um, what I would see as a tool is almost kind of like this, this social topography that I can be looking at the individual questions and then seeing the, the layers of whether it's like sex, age, ethnicity, ability, and the different dimensions that then feed into these questions. Um, and that will happen as we, the practitioners, the people on the ground are contributing that data to this and, and growing it. But then further, I think there can often be a lot of conflict between practitioners on this kind of interface between like qualitative and quantitative data and the value. And there doesn't need to be actually the two support each other. They complement one another. Neither is more or less valuable. So I think that the, the tool itself can be a, a space for dialogue and how the, the two actually really do support one another and um, can help us through the barrier of some of this um, context uh, because though though our countries have so many similarities, we also have very different like political, ethnic, cultural um, nuances that are underscored so deeply in the gender lens. Um, so I, I think that having this tool become a dialogue space as well would be really, really um, amazing for our work. That's incredible. You covered a lot of ground there. Everything from, no, it, I'm so glad you did. Everything from using this as an opportunity to challenge the binary um, to, I think, a very related Point of so let's use this as a dialogue to advance the whole thing. Not we're not just solving these you know problems and, and filling the data gaps for our own purposes, but this is this is really a chance to advance things. And it's it's going to take all of us asking some hard questions and and navigating with folks who have the ability to change uh, what data is available um, and how it's framed and all of these points. I um I think that's fantastic, and I am thinking now if. We've, we've used up our first um, round of the, the panel time and it's been so rich. I can't believe the time has just flown because everyone had these fantastic and diverse but complementary perspectives. So I wanted to um, remind folks in the audience, in the uh, participants, if you have a question, you can write it in the chat and we'll try to raise that. Um, but just to round out this panel, before we move to our mentee questions for everybody, I wanted to give each panelist a chance to just take you know, 30 seconds-ish. Um, if you have a key takeaway that you wanted to share, a, a key message, um, I know that that would be very, very welcome because we covered so much ground and it was, it was quite powerful. So if that's okay with you, I would love to come back to each of you for just final takeaway thought, if you will. I know I'm throwing this at you. All right, Sarita, kick us off, please. Um, thank you for the opportunity once again, Cynthia. 
uh, learning from the process of the risk assessment framework and the data collection and so forth, understanding of gender equality and the areas to address inequality requires extensive consultations is what we have learned as the process. And the data analysis part is really uh, because we did it in one of the municipalities and we needed to fit, uh, fill the national uh, consensus where the data is just segregated and collection of data is just for the collection, not the need is yet to be felt. So as this platform grows, what I would suggest is uh, we do expand uh, the sectors as already uh, uh, previous speakers have already mentioned. And uh, we need to work on how to like use the data that we have for better programming is what I would like to reinforce because this platform has to grow and then to grow Sometimes authenticity of the data is our questions. When it, we come to monitoring and evaluation, there are different aspects. So uh, the need of the minimizing gender gaps has to arise. And that's how the awareness and the capacity is required for the same. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Sarita. Can I just, would anybody else like to offer a, a 30 second takeaway message? I can I can call you up, but if you have a bird, yes, there you go, please, Kalani. Thank you so much, Cynthia. I think um, actually I might like to go back to the last question for my final remarks um, to, to to build on Lamb's response on um, water accessibility. I think that's an area that I can really see this expanding into, sort of more generally, including. Um, gender gaps on unpaid care work. And this was something that we saw drastically rise during the pandemic and really limit women's ability to continue paid care work, uh, paid work. Um, but we also see where areas that are particularly impacted by climate change, such as drought prone areas within a country, um, impact women's time spent getting water or accessing uh, resources. Um, and additionally, factors such as, um, you know, women's land ownership, expanding women's leadership or, or um, potential uh, political representation beyond the parliamentary level, but also at the local government and community levels um, or in particular sectors. And also e echoing Eli's point on um, intersectional data pieces, that would be great to get um, included in this. Um, but, you know, as, as many of the panelists have already pointed out, we do have to rely on the availability of data. So that that is a challenge. But this is a very promising start. And it's great to see. So thank you again. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kalani. Well said. Perfect. May, over to you. Um, sure. I think my my point actually builds up on, on what Kalani just said really nicely. I think my my what I observed also is that the limitation of the, the 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 platform in terms of the availability of the data is also very dependent on the availability of the data in country. So I'm just wondering if this we can use this as a dialogue to push for maybe more conversation with the each country's government, maybe particularly the National Statistics Office, um, in seeing what kind of data that they're collecting and how we can encourage them or work with them to collect wider range of data. And this is not, of course, just not just for this particular project for Sobia, but for maybe wider stakeholder engagement in general. And, and yeah, maybe um, my final words would be that I hope that this platform can, can be um, promoted to wider and wider use because that's the, the purpose of this. Um, and thank you very much again for, for, for including me in the panel today. And I also have learned so much from all the panelists. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I, I think there's a, a lot of learning going on um, at the moment. This is really, it's even, it's so much beyond just the practical um, to the ambition of changing the whole space and leveraging data to make change, I think is so exciting. So we've got um, three panelists uh, who have an option for closing words. Lam, would you like to share any takeaway messages? What does this mean? What difference can it make? Any any sort of burning insights you wanted to have a chance to share? Yeah, uh, I would like to say that uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, data, the data sometimes the data data already available. However, uh, 
uh, we couldn't, uh, they are not willing to say some institute or some organization not willing to say. So the most important thing is that we have to talk of like the conversation or talk or commitment with some center and also province to authority. So they willing to support because we are doing for scientific uh, proposal and also decision maker proposal. So they willing to say. And in addition that like example in Vietnam, um, for the national and provincial statistic office, normally they have a lot of um, survey. Every year they have a survey and also to bring out the, the, the result from survey. Uh, however, sometimes gender, in terms of gender perspective, uh, still did not have many questions about gender. So we should on have a conservation and talk with them that adding some questions related related to the gender perspective, especially in agriculture, in water management, and also some like the uh, um, uh, employee employment, something like that. So we adding the question for the inter in the program of uh, of statistic survey in in both uh, national, provincial, and also even district level. So after that, we get the result, and they willing to say so. We need some policy for supporting fun or maybe incorrect the national um, and central government have to have some funding about the gender perspective and gender issue or also then the question adding to the survey program. So it is my expectation and also my suggestion. That's wonderful. I, I really appreciate those connecting those dots and the ambition in there, the potential of change here. To, to help make those changes all the way from local to that policy level. So uh, let's turn to um, Tree Anne. Would you like to have some last words? Any thoughts? Um, you know, what difference can it make? What's your takeaway? Uh, I think I also agree with uh, some of the panelists that uh, we can use it as a dialogue, as a advocacy tool to the government. So like for even women in Vietnam, we will, I think we'll share it with our like uh, national partners, the ministries, the GSO, the MULISA, I mean, the ministry of, of uh, like in charge of gender equality. So to show that, show them that there is a platform that can be used to monitor the, the, the progress on gender equality and basically the gaps in terms of the data and, and uh, to advocate for the collection of the of the gender indicator and the second discredited data in uh, in the national surveys yes that's wonderful thank you and i appreciate too that the reference again to indicators because of course uh, one of the big problems with the sdgs in terms of sdg5 is that it's not even the lack of progress it's the lack of data uh, that we can't we can't even track how we're doing so closing that aspect would be fantastic so that brings us back to you eli for any takeaway messages um, how do you see this as part of the larger mission in the region or what difference can something like this make or any takeaway message? What do you think? Yeah, um, thank you. And I, I appreciate that I got the most time to kind of mull on this. Um, but I think um, I, I go back to Ha's kind of first Mentimeter, which was that um, we're all using gender data. It's just that maybe we're not like aware of it. And so I think that like all, all programming, all projects are, are, are gendered programming. Um, it's just actually the responsibility is on the organization or the, the people implementing to acknowledge or decide whether or not it's going to be gender biased or, or gender responsive. Um, so that, that falls to us. Um, so I think that having tools like this um, can help really kind of acclimate organizations or people who don't consider themselves yet as, as gender focused organizations or as feminists to actually take the time in a very user friendly way to, to get familiar with some of the language and some of the questions and recognizing how gender plays such a critical role in everything that we are actually doing. It's not a standalone sector. It, it's completely and fully cross-cutting. Um, so I think that that would be my key takeaway in, in all of this. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. And, and um, I think you've really put it together so beautifully for us, whether or not we know it or recognize it, we're all using gender data or we're choosing to you know, use assumptions not informed by gender data to make decisions. We're all having impact on equality or inequality. We're either entrenching and reinforcing inequalities or we're making change towards closing the gaps. 
um, yeah, I thought that was just fantastic. And so I wanted to um, just double check. So uh, as I'm thanking the panel, we're going to start transitioning to our mentee to wrap up this session. But I just wanted to double check that we didn't have any questions into the panelists. I think you've covered so much ground and, and so articulately. We don't have any questions for you from the room. So we're gonna turn and ask the, the room some questions. Participants will have a chance to answer. Um, but I wanted to just um, thank every panelist again before we do uh, for your, your thoughts, your insights um, for piloting. Um, and just to say, I really, I was so excited to hear not just the practical use and the, the time saving and that the access and the, the application that it, it really seems like it's going to work. But um, I'm so inspired to hear that this is a possibility to open dialogue and partnership, working together to, to change not just here I have this report, but here let's sit together and start to get the systems better so that we actually have a sort of a, a data to policy infrastructure that's going to help us close the gaps. So a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of the panelists. And with that, we will turn to our Mentimeter to close the session. So this is a Mentimeter to ask participants in the room um, a similar question uh, as we asked the panelists. So if, um, uh, if Kunjua, if you wouldn't mind kindly putting the Menti link into the chat for everyone. We have two questions and the first one is going to be um, same as we asked the panelists, but this is for everyone on the call. So thinking about your organization, how do you think you might use the gem? You've played with it, you've heard how other people have used it. And so this first question will be a multiple choice question. And Kunjua, will you share the screen for us? There we go. So please participants, you are all invited and welcome to use the Menti link that Jua has just put in the chat. You should see this session two question. And you can, as you go into it, of course, you can give a heart or a question mark or thumbs up, thumbs down, or either a cat or an evil shape, whichever you prefer, see how you're doing. Great, we've got lots of different impressions coming in. That's great. We either have cat lovers or people who are a bit perplexed um, or, or uh, <laughs> so if you're if you're putting the cat in, please, by all means, put your questions um, in the chat. I'm curious to know what the cat means. We've got a ton of um, thumbs up here. That's wonderful. So let's roll on into the uh, Mentimeter question, this first question, which is it's same as we asked the panelists. So but now put your own organizational hat on. So what purpose do you think you or your colleagues might use GEM for. It's multiple options and you can choose as many or as few as you like. Excellent, oh, I see and in the chat, we have a big cat lover. Thank you for explaining your choice of the cat. That's excellent, great. So go ahead, we've got a few choices um, here. Wow, we've got a lot of things rolling in. Identifying gender issues is in the lead with a tie between writing progress research reports, analyzing data together has just rushed in, this is a bit like watching a, a horse race, analyzing data, uh, we've got, uh, excellent, we've got about 16 responses in there, we'll just give it about 10 more seconds, perfect, a few more coming in, I know it's a long list to read, so it looks like what this graph tells me in the moment is that we've got a range of uses um, so not just one or two, we've got a, a quite, quite a number of options. Um, a lot of people are mentioning data, to analyzing this kind of data together with other sectoral data, um, using this to identify critical issues. As, as panelists mentioned, that would be like really in context, what are the issues? Um, we've got uh, some other strong ones on, of course, writing reports, um, but also using them inputs to presentation or curricula. And I noticed that myself as I was able to screenshot a wonderful graph and use it in you know, 15 seconds or less. As Eli said, it's a time saver. That's great. Tracking gender progress. And then we've got policy um, and informing gender action plans and uh, informing new research ideas. That's interesting to use research gaps. I'm delighted to see that range. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, putting your answers into this. Let's do the second um, Mentimeter question before we wrap up this session and we'll, I'll hand over to Rishi at that point. So the second question is who else do you think would want to know about and use GEM? And I don't mean an individual, uh, not the person who sits in the office next to you, but who else like 
what category, um, maybe it's students or um, who else do you have in mind? And this one, you can just uh, type your answer right into the box and submit. It's, um, it's not multiple choice, just go ahead and write it in. Excellence, we're already seeing researchers, graduate students. This, as a, as a PhD supervisor, I was thinking as well, I would absolutely love my students working in the region to be able to use this and to get familiar with how to use it. Government and policymakers, fantastic. That's great. Yes, government. And then here's a broader one. So not just government, but UN agencies, international um, and national NGOs. Um, interesting. So pro program and project teams, and we even saw some of that on the panel. But then getting into the private sector, that's very, very interesting. Uh, multilateral development banks as well. I'm working with some folks in financing. And I also was thinking how wonderful if um, uh, financial service providers could see the gaps as a way and the um, see data like this to help them understand women as clients, as viable clients. And the list goes on. This is great. I'm sure the, um, the, the project team are delighted to see this and are capturing this disaster risk reduction makers, more in private sector insurance. So there is a strong private sector trend. This will be interesting to dive into develop, um, decision makers, development organizations. And I agree, basically all the international development stakeholders. Absolutely wonderful. What a great set. We will capture this and appreciate it. Um, and we will think on how to make sure this uh, the GEM platform reaches people in all of these different areas. Ooh, and one last one, research institutes in country, local governments, local development partners, students. This is great. People are seeing a breadth of users and how interesting. My, my last point on this is that I think this range of users and the fact that some people are even bunching them up into the same box, I think this reinforces what our wonderful panelists said. Here's an opportunity for dialogue. Maybe we can start to use the GEM platform as a space to get in and just speak around some of the issues, gaps, um, and opportunities that that data presents. So thank you so, so much uh, to each and every one of the panelists. Thank you so much to the participants. Excellent, insightful um, responses here on Menti. If, you, if participants have questions for the panelists, I encourage you, even though we're moving to the next session, just type them right into the chat. And with no more ado, I will hand over to the next session, which will be led by Rishi. Thank you very much, and over to you, Rishi. Uh, thank you, Cynthia. So, hi, everyone. So let me welcome you to session three. So session three will be a very simple session, and this will be a session which will be also a bit short session because here we are basically trying to understand uh, the future capacity needs of, uh, for this GEM tool as a way forward. So we will try to touch upon three areas. So one is uh, trying to understand a little bit on the usefulness of this tool. And then second uh, would be to understand its applications in different areas in different sectors. And the third one would be uh, the need for capacity building. So these will actually give us uh, an understanding about uh, the future capacity needs and how do we uh, design our plans to build further capacity uh, for the reason. So uh, here, basically what I'm going to do is to do a very brief survey now you are very familiar with Mentimeter, but here we will be doing it with another survey tool that is the Survey Monkey, and I will have four questions for you to answer to me. And once you have answered those questions, then I would uh, provide you the feedback on the outcome of those uh, uh, questions. So let me share my screen and uh, let me. There you go. So we have a QR code here. So those of you who are using. Uh, the mobile phones, so you can use this QR code to scan it and look at the questions and provide me with the answers. And for those of you uh, who are using laptops, so let me uh, put the web link into the chat box so that you can use it to answer, answer the questions. Just a moment. There you go. So you can take about five minutes or so and you can answer these questions. And then I, I will get back to you with the overall poll results.
All right, so let me declare the results that I have received so far. Majority of you have responded to the poll. Thank you so much. Uh, I have got a lot of information through this survey. So the first question was on how would you rate the gem tool in terms of its usefulness? And I'm very happy to say that uh, almost every one of you have actually ranked it four, which is high. And some of you have also ranked it five, which is very high. So which means that you really see the usefulness of the tool. Then we, the second question we ask is about uh, listing out some areas where you think this tool can be effectively used. And some of the key areas that have been identified is on uh, community overview, policy development, gender analysis. That is one area which has been identified by quite a few of you gender-based violence monitoring, that is another one, advocacy and targeted programming. So this is another area that has been identified. There is also another very specific sectoral level, uh, ident uh, sector, sectoral, sectoral identification that is on energy transport and disaster risk reduction. So these are some of the key areas that, that has been identified by most of the pa participants. There are also other areas which have been identified so thank you for providing this information. Then the third question was related to in which field of the data from the GEM platform can be effectively used. So we have given you four areas and majority of you have feel that um, the tool can be very effectively used to understand sub-level, sub-national sub level dynamics that contribute to gender inequality. So majority of um, you have identified this as one uh, area that this tool could be very effectively used. The second option that was identified by the second majority group was increase the interministerial co cooperation on data collection, data sharing, gender analysis, and gender responsive planning. So these are the two key areas that, have, that has been identified the majority of the uh, respondents. So in terms of future capacity needs, of course, uh, there is a requirement uh, on monitoring and evaluation. So that is, many of you have identified that area. Then some have also identified areas related to data analysis, communication and influencing for positive change in gender inclusion and gender equality. Uh, trainers for tool application, that is one. Then training for the national NGOs, that is a requirement. And there is a particular requirement from one of the respondents, so which says that uh, they want to have a short video clip of the introduction to the GEM tool uh, as a landing page and use it to promote it to the public. So these are some of uh, uh, the feedbacks that we have received in terms of uh, understanding uh, the future capacity needs. So we will definitely work on this. So this has given us a kind of an understanding about the future needs of this tool. And from here on, we can kind of think of how we build uh, the capacity uh, development plan for this tool for the future and provide necessary training and capacity building to the user. So with this, uh, this session three comes to an end. Thank you so much to everyone for taking this survey. Now I would hand it or hand, hand the sessions back to Dr. Piranam for the wrap up and wrap up session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rishi. Um... Wow, it's been two hours. I think time flew really, really well when we enjoy it. So um, just want to reflect back very quickly on what had happened over the past two hours. Um, what struck me at the beginning when um, Ha asked you to put some words into the word cloud on what kind of data that you would love to see. And we see a bunch of um, inputs from everyone there. I was so pleased that most of the data that you needed and you listed there will already be there in the gem tool so please explore the gem the gem platform and you will find that data um, the data you, you need i want to thank ha for um, doing this stepwise video presentation to introduce the gem platform really really nicely it captures our five years of engagement to really develop this gem tool in, in only a few minutes but um, I, I take also the suggestion from one of the participants to put this um, stepwise video as part of the GEM platform itself as a, as a learning tool. 
Now, when we got into this um, panel discussion, my first reaction was just wow! It was a, such a fantastic um, panel discussion. Cynthia and the panelists, you set the bar so high that we have to follow in our next panel discussions in our future events. But we'll, we'll learn from you. What struck me from the from the panel discussion was the diversity of the answers, diversity of the of the ideas. Like we heard responses from the panelists in terms of the level of applications from country like country level application to provincial, all the way to community level. We heard about sectoral applications of the gem platform. Like someone talk about the energy sector, someone talk about the water sector, but that can be many, many more of other sectors that can benefit from this gem to gem platform. In terms of the different kinds of use, we heard that this can be used for advocacy too, used for analysis, used for research. But the best thing that I heard was also because of it's so easy to use and so um, easy to access, you can uh, save a lot of time by clicking a few buttons to get information and data that would have taken you so many days or weeks to to get the same. So we really hope that you will go back and try to explore this gem platform and, and use it. So I think this is really a short summary. We will continue to work on this one. This, one. this is a live um, tool. So um, we'll continue to upgrade and update it and do you can come back and check check in any time. Uh, we would love to create a, a sort of community of practice on around this gem platform as well. So we will get back to you. Uh, those of you who have registered for this event, you will receive um, a response. And those of you who did not register and would like to be part of it, part of it, drop us um, emails and we will include you in a in a com conversation. So to this end, I just want to thank everyone. Um, Particularly, um, Cynthia and Ha, my fellow facilitators, you did really well in engaging everyone. Keep, every, keep keeping everyone engaged for the for the last two hours. Uh, Want to thank our three distinct, distinguished guests at the beginning, Todd, Dan, and Hans for, for setting the scene to get it, get us rolling in this session. The panelists, um, I would have to read my note just to avoid missing any name. Eli, May, Sarita, Tui. Kalani and Lam, thank you so much. You you met the panel discussion felt as if we were there together in person and you share a lot of insights and, and information. We'll build on um, your wisdom there and go further. Uh, I also want to thank the team, actually the ADPC and SEI team who have been not only behind this event, but behind the development of the GEM tool over the past many years. Um, Jenny, Ha, Da, Kunjua, Rishi, Ankit, Hannah, Ekapon, Pin, Kamal, or even a few of the other colleagues that uh, have moved on, who really play a big role to take us to this point. So thank you so much. Last but not the least, I want to thank all the participants. I know that this is late for some of you. This is way, very early for some of you, but you stuck around for the for the past two hours, and you also. Um, engage in the conversation in the chat room. So I want to thank everyone for that. So now we come to the end of the session. This is the end of the session to launch the GEM platform, but I see it as the beginning of the next chapter for us all to go out and use this GEM platform. I will want to borrow Ha's and May's word that now that we have, we can point out to the problems, gender problems. I want to add that let's not stop there. Let's go and fix those problems together using the information that you can get from this gym platform. So with that, let me close this very informative and fruitful session. Thank you everyone once again.